to eat and ask to be sent back But you can thank fucking Christ that I was Best that- oh, is it that time already? Right, <clears throat> uh, Top Blake's Log, start date 101 As you might have gathered from the previous hundred fucking space vlogs I'm adrift in the infinite void of hypertime Still no sign of that phone box that blew past last week and still no sign of a way out of this dingo's breakfast of a stag do. Replicator still fucking kicks off every time I want something to eat. I asked it to materialise some Queensland style roux burgers last night. And it did all of them with middle fingers drawn onto the buns with sesame seeds. Ah, oh, too funny mate, real professional. You'll make fucking first officer in no time for sure. All you gotta do is outperform the embalmed corpse of a French emperor and you'll get promoted. We'll see how old baby Nap Nap does with the cooking instead. At least he's always happy. Harder to draw a smiling face onto the quantum miracle microwave than it is a trophy cadaver. Oh wait, hang on. There's something out there. Stroth, someone's at the door. Maybe Domino's really can deliver to multi-dimensional gigaspace. Hang on. What the fuck do you want? I'm right in the middle of my admin here. Outside of space-time, you can hardly be in the middle of anything. Oh, you hear that, boys? We've got us a larrikin with a degree in theoretical physics right here. Well, riddle me this, you dunce flapper. How are you in the middle of my bloody time capsule? You ask questions that are not relevant to the job at hand. That job at hand? Oh, wait, you're the floozy I ordered? Oh, the stag do's back on Earth, mate. Talk about late. You're in the wrong bloody district of reality. Yeah, hold your fucking mouth. No time. Can't be late. Blah, 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 blah. Now get out. I'm trying to slap some discipline into my fucking microwave. It seems you don't understand the situation. A contract has already been signed. You will begin your important work immediately. I'll go right to work, working on kicking your pasty ass right back to the speech therapist dropout reunion party, 1980s briefcase and all. I mean seriously, when was the last time you actually saw a businessman carrying a briefcase? Just email that shit, you fucking Luddite. Whoa, whoa, what the fuck's happening? What's happening? I swear I quit the sugared rhino tusks years ago, but I feel like my body isn't even here anymore. Good luck, King Napoleon. Or should I say, Queen? And that's how a whole new dunny load of absolute grade A-plus premium shit was blasted all over me. Cork-hatted head to sandal-backed toe. But I have seen my beloved France eaten away in years of war. I could hear the voice of a man attempting to do a French accent, ranting on about how his nation of France had been destroyed by war. Yeah, you don't have to tell me, mate. I was fucking driving the bulldozers on that one. Sardi Prime got no time for your Frenchy wine, so do you mind? I did manage to get out of him that it was the 19th of February. Just the 19th of February. Why even bother telling me the year or the location? Those things don't matter to anyone, do they? Especially someone who just appeared right before you after falling out of a rip in space-time. Just tell them it's fucking Tuesday and they'll be right up to speed faster than a possum up a gum tree. But I guess it was for the best that this guy didn't tell me what was going on, as that would have just meant a few more seconds of indescribable rage. Two more blokes sidled up on horses and blew off some rubbish about protecting me with their lives in order to save France. Yeah, right, mate, good one. But I looked around me. French pavilions, French flags, everyone was speaking in a faux French accent. Jean, my colleague and I will escort you to the Chateau of the Dauphin, or else we will die trying. I looked down at myself, and I felt like a guy thrown into a shark tank that was itself in freefall, dropping right into the mouth of an active volcano. Firstly, I saw that I had boobs, not what the doctor fucking ordered. Then I saw that I was dressed in shitty rags and smelt like a sewage works after a Bris Vegas curry night. What happened to my fine t-shirt and khakis get up? And then I saw the fucking label sticking out of my crusty mess of a dress. Joan de la motherfucking Ark, mate. The saviour Sheila death dealer who pranced France out of the morgue of the Hundred Years' War, paving the way for some fucking vertically challenged cheese chaser with a silly hat to go around claiming he was emperor of the world, waving my fucking CV in people's faces for proof. 
That briefcase bogan back in the mega reality hyper network was playing some trick on me. But I wasn't going to have it. I told the two guys who were pledging to do what I say to make good on that pledge by killing every Frenchman they bloody well saw. And we got to work, slashing our way through the middle of nowhere French base I'd materialised in, much to the confusion of said Frenchies, who actually didn't even try to fight back. No wonder they ended up getting replaced with robots. The actual Frenchies couldn't tell a slashing sword from a pleasant breeze, so just stood there getting slaughtered to the last man, the most nonchalant goons this side of the French Revolution. As we cut them down, one of them said, you are Jean of Arc. I have heard your claims and believe what you say. We will follow you to Chinon. Oh, you believe my claims, do you? My claims that the genocide starts here and it's the duty of all Frenchmen to commit suicide at once in order to save the future? Well, cheers, mate. Mighty cooperative of you. Hang on, there's something on your neck. Let me just get rid of it with my sword. So we killed them all. But that didn't stop them claiming they'd help me save the land or whatever. Seemed that this manure-encrusted street urchin I was embodying was pretty good at convincing people to die for her without even asking, a skill I could certainly appreciate. It dawned on me as I was frantically going to work on a stone tower using only a sharp fragment of an old teapot I found, that maybe I could use this power to take control of France myself, and make it so that I already ruled France even before the Napoleonic Wars happened. With that, I could probably just take over the whole damn world before anyone could even say, Sacred son of a bitch! I thought she was going to be the savior of La Belle France, but all we've done is destroy the French army. Oui, not exactly what I signed up for, and I've lost my favorite teapot, a most mad omen. But we've come this far, what else can we do? Spaghetti. Oui, oui, a pledge is a pledge. I guess this will teach us for making sacred oaths to some peasant who was only here delivering the local bulls club's newsletter. Foul stonework of France, be gone! With every slash, you lose atoms that you can never get back, monsieur. Surrender while you still have your dignity, and we shall make your death quick and hilarious. How about being trapped in a shark tank, free falling into a volcano? The contract cannot be broken, Napoleon. My reputation depends on it. Please try that again. By the super magic of a man who put more effort into his tie than his understanding of linguistics, the French were resurrected and rallied around me like a hero of France I apparently was for some reason. Pretty good military thinking right there. Out of ideas? Just fucking make the next kid you see your general and fight to the death for them. That'll probably work. So we needed to go and see some lord to get him to hook me up with a real army. The weird deals I'd picked up from the camp would have to do for now, and we had a chance to test them right away. Fucking ten metres outside the camp was a pack of wolves sitting in the road. Didn't think my surprisingly charismatic cassolette of shit was going to convince them, so I ordered my soldiers to cut them down from afar. And of course, of bloody fucking course, they were so shit that they couldn't hit shit for shit, and I shit you not. Hundreds of crossbow bolts filled the air as they frantically tried to impress the new girl in town, and I can tell you that said girl was ready to fuck off and join the wolves instead, because these guys were either the early adopters of the fur is murder mantra, or they learned to shoot at a rigged fairground shooting gallery, making them just about miss every single time ended up literally walking to point wank range and finally a couple of them managed to get a hit by just stabbing the bolts into the beasts with their hands. Great, we'd finally found a way to overcome a relatively docile woodland creature. We'd be winning this war in no time. And who was this war against, I hear you asking? Well, I was wondering the same bloody thing, but couldn't ask any of my new cringy companions as they were too busy trying to maintain their accent to actually string a sentence together. Well, I found out just a moment later when we came across a massive battle between the literally yellow-bellied French and the dastardly British. Now, I'd not had too much beef with the Poms in the past, and looking at them, they seemed to be a cut above the gutter sludge that my side was calling an army. While frantically trying to stop my men from rushing in to die as well, I noticed the noble cavaliers, the legendary elite longbowmen, and the devastating onagers, a well-prepared, well-drilled army. I was up Ship Creek without a pedal, and the boat was just a load of French corpses held together with hair ties. 
But then the Brits decided they had let me pass and wandered back to their camp to piss tea and shit scones. Didn't look hopeful that I'd actually be able to defeat those guys once their blighty bowel movement stopped. But hey, I was the king who turned Sardinia from a collection of plastic bottles and tinnies floating in the ocean to the seat of power of a pan-European empire slash global pirate kingdom. If the fucking soap dodgers thought they could top my strategic supremacy, they'd soon see the sight of a sweeping symphony of soldiering, a superb storm of slaughter, a sundering smash to shatter their stupid silver spoon saloons, to saute their sacrilegiously steam supplies, to sell them shell secure and to severely serve some more of the sickly sweet serendipitous distress relief of a suddenly steeped with this succulent seeping with shovels of shuddering shit that show the sentiment that sits within all surrounding the Brits. Fuck, I left my meds in the time capsule. Oh, God. <laughs> Bree, come on. All right. Oh, God. Stop sewing. Stop sewing. That's all the tapestry I can dictate for one day. Oh, I barely even got the damn story started. And it's already a 10-meter monster of a wall rug. Uh, for now, I'll just say, uh, don't believe what they tell you out there. Joan wasn't some courageous peasant who rose to glory, fighting the Brits and the pretty fucking low glass ceiling of medieval Europe. She was a true blue Aussie, pissed on space amber, and pissed off with just about every pixel of the Matrix she was trapped in. Ah, but that wasn't going to stop me piloting that little brat to some fucking A-star glory, believe you me.